In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to draw, digitize, and embroider a design using the iPad. Let's go. What's up, Legacy family? My name is Ken, and thank you so much for your warm welcome. For this project, I'm using a normal iPad with an iPad pen. The app that we'll use to draw today's design is called Procreate. Now, this video isn't sponsored by Procreate. I personally use this app on the iPad, and this channel is supported by those of you who have purchased the Doodler app, our designs club, and our digitizing made easy education. So thank you for your support and the links to those products will be in the description. Now disclaimer about the iPad Doodler app is you do need a PC to export your files. The iPad is a free extension to the PC software where you can take your iPad anywhere you want on the go without needing any cables and when you come back home you transfer that file that you created onto your PC, add any final touches and export it onto your embroidery machine. Let's get started with the drawing part. Let's go. So I'm going to be opening up Procreate and in Procreate there is this option at the top right for you to create a new canvas. All I'm going to do is select screen size so that it fills up the whole screen. Now in today's video I won't be showing you everything that Procreate offers because honestly it has a lot of tools but I will show you the very very essentials which is everything that I use to create my own designs. Now at the top right there is a brush library and right here you can see like I said a bunch of different brushes. Now for me, I simply stick to two and that is called Peppermint and the other one is under inking, I believe, and it's called the Studio Pen. You can see them here under my recents, Peppermint and Studio Pen. Now the reason why I like using these brushes, right here you, at the top left, you can select your colors, so you can change colors and it gives you like a bunch of different versions. I just like using the classic one or disc. But the reason why I like using peppermint is because it kind of has like this kind of sketchy feeling. So you can see it's almost like if I'm drawing in real life, hello, you know, that looks really bad, <laughs> but pretend it said hello. And uh, on my second tool, the studio pen, once I've sketched out my, let's say, hello, right, hello, I will go then to the studio pen and trace on top of it afterwards. You can see that that one is a lot better and I have a setting where it just becomes super, super smooth so it doesn't look like that jittery type of font. Now to set that up, you simply click on the brush and then you click again and you go under stabilization and you can increase the stabilization amount, the, the pressure, the motion filtering and it shows you here where you can kind of mess around until you find your perfect settings. If you guys have never used this program before, I highly suggest that you go and check out a bunch of tutorials because it's a pretty awesome like application, but it's just, it has a lot. <laughs> so we're gonna stick to just the super basics. And right here I have my eraser and my layers. We're gonna start with layer one and we're gonna use the peppermint tool for now. Now on the left side here, I have the brush size. I'm gonna just leave it at 100. And right here I have the opacity of that brush. I'm gonna leave it at 100 because we're gonna be doing some sketching. Now, I thought that for the first design, I wanted to stay super simple. I don't really wanna be doing something crazy yet. We'll leave that for the 10th video, <laughs> okay? So for the first design, I was thinking, let's create a little bunny. Disclaimer, I am not the best designer. I am not the best drawer. I'm not the best artist when it comes to this. I'm pretty much just going to draw out of my imagination. And because this is all sketch, you can actually with if you have two fingers, you can move around if you tap twice. I mean, if you have tap with two fingers once, and if you tap with three fingers, it'll redo. So undo, redo and all of that. Pretty cool, right? I think uh, I made the face first. I have no idea why. <laughs> and I'm just going to close it up and do up. Oh, see, I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a face like this. Awesome. That looks like a face. I'm not sure it looks like a bunny, <laughs> but we're gonna stick around with it for now. So I'm just gonna add the ears, something. Oh, those are a little too big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And I think Bugs Bunny has kind of like pointy ears. So I kind of want to have a little bit of a pointy ears too. You know what? For the second one, I'll just go like this. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not trying to be too complicated with this design. We're trying to stay simple. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some paws. So I again, let's, I'm going to try my best to add a paw right here. 
and I'm gonna add a second one like so. Then the third one like this, just to make it so that it's kind of like sitting on his little paws. And the last one will go around here. Whoops, that looks like a, such a weird leg. And something like that. Kind of looks like a little frog, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a little, uh, it's a little bunny frog type of thing. I, uh, I like that. <laughs> no, I'm just if you if you find yourself that you don't like the way it looks, you can always double tap or tap with two fingers and redo it like that. I'm just gonna try and make it a little bit cuter. You know, if anything, I'll just add a little bit of a paw here and turn it into like a. A little bit of a chubby, chub, a little bit of a chubby bunny. Cool. And then do the other one, and like so. It's there. <laughs> and then the last thing that I'm gonna do to this bunny is going to be add a little bit of that bunny tail. Cool. That's pretty cute. That's for a sketch. You know, it looks pretty nice. Over here on the top left, if you guys want to change any of like the settings, so for example, the select tool, this one right here, I like to use this if I want to move my my face. So let's say I want to move the face of the bunny. I'm going to use that select tool. And then with this one, I can move it around. Now that looks cute. That looks nice. I really, really like it. And remember, this is just the sketch. Now we get to the fun part. And this is where we utilize the studio pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on layer one and under normal in that end that you see right there, I'm gonna bring the opacity down to about 50%. Click that again and let's create a new layer. And under that new layer, I will click now on the studio pen. Now on the studio pen over here on the left, you have different sizes. And what I think I'll do is I'll just select maybe like a 50% size. Let's see what that looks like. That's about good. Maybe let's put it at 60. Just because I want this design to be a little bold. You guys know I like bold outlines when it comes to my digitizing. And just like we did with the sketch, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go around the eyes, create the first one, create the second one. I'm going to create the nose like so. Let's make it a little bit more like a, like a Dorito shape. <laughs> do the first one like so. Do the second one like so. Awesome. And then let's see if I can get the face in one shot. I'm not sure, but we're going to find out. Uh, there you go. Does that look good? Nope. <laughs> I'll try again. No problem. Press tap with two fingers like so. Go around, go around, go around and finish. That's good enough for me. And by the way, guys, if you find that when you're like zooming in and out with your fingers and the brush keeps changing the size, no problem. All you gotta do is go to settings and under preferences, you just simply wanna have dynamic brush scaling on. That will basically stop your brush from switching sizes every single time you, you uh, zoom in or zoom out. So here I can see that this eye is a little bit bigger, so I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit smaller and yeah, that looks pretty good. So again, these ears, I'm gonna just create them really quickly. I'm gonna give them more of like a bunny shape to them. And awesome, that's cute. Let's do the paws. And for the paws, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn them more like this. Yeah, something like that. Let's do the second one. Like this. Yep, let's do the feet. The, do bunnies, I think bunnies have like really long feet, don't they? So maybe we'll elongate it like so. Or is that frogs? No, I think it's bunnies. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Maybe I should have drawn a frog instead of a bunny. Maybe I have a, more of a frog intuition. <laughs> I'm going to just add the quick little tail like so. And then what we can do is for the layer one, we can deselect it so we don't see it anymore. That is a pretty cool bunny. I really like it. It looks very cute. And now we're going to be adding some color. But because this design is supposed to be super simple, I'm not going to be going crazy. So we'll save that for the next videos. We're going to add a new layer. And what we're going to do to this layer is we're actually going to bring it underneath layer two. That is because I like to add colors in separate layers. And just like digitizing, we're going to work on layers. You don't want to be messing around with that because then if I were to work on the same layer, then if I want to change the color or if I want to do something to it, it's a little too late and it'll destruct the design. Let's add now a bit of a color. We're going to add first like the tiny details. So what I'll do is maybe I'm just going to select this pink right here. Cool. 
and I will add that pink to here. Now you can see that the pink didn't actually go on top. Like if, 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 I, if I were to bring the layer all the way to the top, you could see that the pink would be at the top, but because I brought it down, it's underneath the outline. You guys will notice that's what happens in digitizing too. And something that I'll do is I will just add maybe like a little bit of a pink here, just to give it that detail of the bunny, nothing too crazy, something like that. Let's see, maybe I'll even keep it around here. You know, just like the inside of the ear and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I like that, that looks pretty cute. Pretty nice looking, awesome. We're gonna leave it like that. Now, if I really wanted to, I could just add a couple of extra details onto this design, like some shadows. So I will grab the light gray and I'm just gonna add maybe like a little shadow somewhere here and there. I'm not gonna add too much, like I said, because I don't want this design to be too complicated, especially for the first time. So I'm just gonna add maybe a couple of shadows here and a couple of shadows here. That's pretty good. That's all I'm gonna do. And uh, if you have the second generation pen, you can double tap on it and it'll switch between pen and, and eraser. I just erased that. Now, there is still a white there. If I were to take the background color, you won't see the white. So make let's make sure that we create a white layer. I'm gonna create a new layer, bring it underneath the details layer that I just made. So right here. And what I'll do is I'll click on, maybe let's make it at an even lighter gray something like that. And we're just gonna surround, go around, I'm trying to go around the center of the black outline. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can simply grab this color at the top right and drop it so I can fill it in. You guys saw how quickly I did that. That was super, super simple, pretty nice, pretty easy. And we're gonna do that with the whole design. If you were to just fill it in, you could see that the whole thing would get filled in and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna do this to every single part. Just go around, around the center. And like, just like digitizing, if you guys don't know, this is basically a little bit of that overlapping because right now we're trying to put it in the center so that outline will be there. Now that I've done that, I can pretty much come here and change a couple colors that I want and I can simply drag and drop and the color will change of the design. So if I want it to be like a dark gray, I can do that, but then you can't see nothing. <laughs> so we don't wanna do that. We're just gonna leave it at that. And now we have a bunny, super, super simple, very cute, and we're ready to digitize this file. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this gear icon, I'm going to click share, and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. Now to export it, you simply save the image, export successful, awesome. You can close the Procreate, you can minimize it, and now we're onto the design doodler. By the way, if you've never digitized before and you'd like to learn how to make clean and better designs, we actually have a free 101 digitizing course. Go check it out in the link in the description. Now, I'm gonna open the design doodler, Awesome, this is everything that you get here. And if you've never seen this program before, John Deere actually spent over an hour giving you a brief overview of what this app has to offer. So if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you go watch that next. But on this program, basically here on the left, we have things such as uh, open, save, we have like tools as redo, undo, the scissor tools, the copy, the paste, the delete, we have even fonts and a bunch of other goodies that we'll talk about in the future. Over here we have the 3D view, we have the hoops. So this hoop right here is 100 by 100. For those of you who have the SE600, that is basically a four by four. Right here we have the grid. This program honestly has so many options, even though it looks super simple, it has a lot. One to one ratio, one to three ratio, one to six ratio. John Deere is more of an expert on that. I have yet to learn truly how it works. And over here we have the palettes. So all of the colors that you guys can pick from, we have the properties and we have the sequence view. If you click right here, this is our wheel. This is how we select the kind of stitches that we wanna draw. So right here, you can see that that is a single stitch or a run stitch right here. If I were to turn the 3D view, you can see that run stitch. I'm going to simply grab this and I'm going to delete it by pressing X. This is why I love using the iPad. It's because I can have my hand here on these tools and I can have the pen on these 
pretty awesome, super quick. If I click on this, I have so many different options for different tools. The main ones that I like to use is this one, which is the run. I like to use this one, which is more for like a tatami, satin, like satin tatami fill. So when you wanna do like the basis, which we'll cover later. And here, this is the, you could say the steel or the outline. It's just nice. And this is what we're gonna use right now. Okay, I'm going to undo by clicking that wheel. And if I click down here, I have some extra things. So if you guys wanna use a different hoop size, that's okay. We're gonna simply go to settings. We're gonna click on hoops and right here, you can pick the one that you want. I'm gonna stick to four by four because I have the mighty hoop, so that's good. Close it up. And to bring in an image, we're simply gonna click this button, photo library, and I'm gonna bring the photo that I just created, which is this one right here. I'm gonna click done, bring it up. And if you were to click on this select tool, it allows you to resize this image. So I can move it around, I can resize it. And something that I love about this app is that it gives you a pretty neat setting that you can mess around with your photos. So if you click under the properties tab, you have this opacity and oh man, do I wish every single digitizing app had this. This is amazing because now I can make this as opaque as I need it. Right here, if I click on the zoom tool and I click like that, I can zoom in. Then I'm gonna go back to moving around the image and I think that's pretty good right there. Awesome, I'm gonna deselect, leave that on. Great, and right here I'm gonna use the ruler just to find out and see how big this design is. 73 millimeters, sounds pretty good to me. It's under four inches, so that's perfect. Now, when it comes to digitizing, I like to work from the top to the bottom. What does that mean? It means that I will digitize the things that will stitch at the top. So in this instance, the outline of this bunny will be the thing that will be at the top. Then it'll be the pink of the ear and the nose. And at last, it'll be the base and maybe the shadows. Go check out the free 101 digitizing course and learn all about this. I'm gonna click on this tool, awesome, and right here I can change the size of it, so if I want it to be thinner but I, or thicker, then I can click on that. I'm gonna stick to this one right here and I'm gonna stick to that one because I believe that's 0.40 millimeters. Now at this point, it's pretty simple. All we're gonna do is pretty much drag around and start creating these shapes right here. So you can see that I'm going around and simply trying to replicate what I just drew on the iPad. So I'm doing that. I'm recreating these shapes. If I click on the hand, I can actually move around. So, oh, and one of the things that I recommend is because the iPad isn't as strong as a PC, I would highly suggest you disable the 3D view just so that it doesn't like lag or anything. So I'm gonna disable that. Let me move this one now. Let's create this little piece right here. Don't worry that it's jumping all over the place because we will be fixing that later. Just super quickly, like you saw with the satin tool, all I'm doing is going around. And if you find that there I was a little too twitchy, I'm simply going to undo with a pen and I'm going to try that again. So let's go like that. It's a little bit too twitchy still. One more time. Perfect. Now, if you see that there's like ends like that, that's no problem. All you do is pretty much click this tool right here to that little stitch because it's a little messed up is I'm simply gonna go under property, select it, and I'm gonna click smooth so that it becomes smooth like that. It took like two seconds. Again, I'm gonna show you properties, apply smooth. I'll do the same thing to this one, apply smooth, and you can see how that got fixed super quickly. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. And again, don't worry that we're jumping all over the place because we're simply going to apply this awesome tool called branching, but that will happen at the end. So just going around, move to the next one. Give me the hand, awesome. For the face, I'm going to leave it at the end. I won't actually mess with it yet because I don't want that to be like branched with the rest of the design. So same thing properties, click on this one and apply just to smooth it out super quickly and then this one to smooth it out super quickly. Cool, cool, cool. Can we do the whole face in one shot? Let's find out. One, two, three, let's go. Wait. One, two, three, let's go. I... Oh, wow. 
it actually looks pretty good. <laughs> That's not too bad, especially for my shaky hands. I have extra shake right now from the coffee that I drank this morning. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around here and just start smoothing these out so that it looks nice and clean. Awesome, cool, 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 let's do that. Great, that looks perfect. And then I guess we'll do that one too right there. So again, settings, I'm gonna click on this one, apply, smooth it out, and I'll uh, smooth that one out too. Let's see, move it out of the way. And this one right here, apply. Awesome. Again, I'm just being super nitpicky, but I'm just showing you all the possibilities that this application has. So you really do have a lot of control, even though you're just digitizing on the iPad. And that's what makes me so excited about this app. It's insane. I never imagined I would be digitizing on an iPad before. Now that's the one thing, I definitely need to get myself one of those like hand thingies so that it doesn't recognize my skin as I'm trying to touch it, but it's okay. See, I guess it recognize that one it's okay no problem we're just gonna go back awesome that was a pretty good line and let's go around let's go around let's go around awesome let's uh zoom out by clicking one to one or one two three uh one to one like so now you can see this design currently is like flying all over the place and we don't really want that. What we want is for the whole thing to be stitching out without jumping, without like cutting and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'm gonna grab the select tool and I'm going to select it all. And right here, if you see the circle and X, I'm pretty much gonna click that and it's going to automatically branch the whole design. That is pretty sweet that this application has that option. You can see the whole thing is branched and now we can keep going with the face. So I'm gonna zoom in into the little uh, mouth and I'm going to get started with this area. So let's do that one. Let's do the other one too. Let me just rewind that one really quickly. Two and three. Cool. We can fix it up a little bit. Again, properties, go here, smooth it out, smoothing time, and that's pretty much it. Didn't really need to do much. Awesome. I'm just gonna zoom in like so, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Grab these three. Did I grab them? So what I'll do right now is because I'm having a little bit of trouble on grabbing it, I'm simply going to click here. And for this one, I'm going to lock it so that I can't use the body. That way I can no longer select the body and I just select these three. Then I'm going to branch those. Now that they're branched, that's awesome. And what I'll do is I can, let's keep it locked for now. That's awesome, no problem. And we can work on the eyes. Now for the eyes, I'm gonna be using a different tool and that is this one right here, which I consider to be the satin slash the timey fill. Right now I believe is, is a satin. Uh, so we're gonna stick to that one. And this one works a little bit different. Instead of you just drawing the shape, you kind of create the area of the design. So I'm drawing the area of that one. That looks cool. If anything, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. That looks great. And let's do the other one. But you know what? Let me just duplicate this by clicking this one right here. I'm going to duplicate. I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna put it right there. Awesome, let's see what that looks like. That looks so cute, <laughs> I love it. Let's disable that, go one to one, zoom in a little bit, 3D. Let's get rid of the image. Awesome, that looks so cute. <laughs> now, we pretty much finished doing a little bit of the outline. Of course, we can keep doing more details, more and more details, like to fix all of that, but I don't want this video to go on forever. So the next thing that we're gonna do now is to add the second one. So it'd be the pink right here. And then we can also do the light gray. Let's go onto the layers and we're just gonna lock this so that we don't move it anywhere by any chance. And we're going to change the colors by going to our palette. I'm gonna select number four. And under number four, I'll close that right now. I'm gonna zoom into this ear and on the ear, I'm going to pretty much just create the shape. So just like I did the eyes, I'm gonna go around and just ever so slightly overlap that. Nothing too crazy though, okay? Then I'm gonna move around to the next one. Oh, remember, this is kind of what happens uh, because my iPad isn't the strongest. 
it kind of lags a little bit. So just remember to take off the 3D, which I just did right now. And I'm going to do the nose. Awesome. Let's redo that really quickly. There we go. And if you want to change the angle of the nose or any other shape, that's pretty easily. You just click this button right here to change the angle. So for the nose, I want it to go up like that. And let's see for this one, what do I want? Let's find out. For this one, what I'll do is I'll just select it to go like so. Cool. Awesome. Let's again zoom back a little bit. Let's open up the 3D. That's what it looks like. And you can see that the pink is on top of the outline. I don't want that. So what I'll do is I'm gonna select the pink and I'm gonna bring it all the way back up. We can lock that because we are no longer using that. Same thing with this. Oh, it's locked already, awesome. So we're not using either of those. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit, cool. And what we'll do is now we're gonna do the last thing which is the gray, cool. Let's do that. I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna select that. Mm, this gray is pretty good. Enable this tool. Let's do the first one. One. Overlapping a little bit, two and three. Now for these things, it's pretty cool because if we select them all, we can actually change their properties and because they're kind of shadows, I don't want them to be 0.4. I think that's a little too dense. So we're just gonna bring that to maybe like point, let's put it at 0.9. I think 0.9 should be pretty good. We can close the sequence view, we can close this one. And what we'll do is we're simply going to branch them. I'm just gonna go to the layers, select the layers, bring it all the way back, and again, lock that layer so we can no longer have access to it. Now, we pretty much did all of the details and here comes the really fun part. Let's actually make the base. And for the base, I'm pretty much just going to select the white. You can close the properties, we don't need that right now. And what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of overlap a little bit. And by overlapping, I mean I like to kind of almost bring it to the center. So right here you can see I'm going to start drawing the first shape and instead of drawing the whole thing, the whole body all at once, I'm just going to divide this, this design so that it can stitch out a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna go around with a hand and I'm not even going to kind of put it all together. Instead, I'm going to be splitting the whole design so it can create these shapes. Whoops, I messed up. Bring it around. You can see that I'm overlapping a little bit and I'm putting it under the black outline. That is so that when there's push and pull compensation that happens, this kind of takes care of that issue. And it's gonna look super nice and clean at the end. Doing that second one again and moving around to the third one. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is absolutely no need to count. <laughs> and the last paw or the foot, the foot's rabbit, rabbit foot. <laughs> I'm just going to create that one and finish it right there. Awesome. Now we can move back. I will zoom out a little bit, zoom in, and we can create the next shape. So let's finish it up right here. I'm going to overlap a little bit on that white. All right just because I don't want there to be a space between these two. That looks awesome. For this whole face, we're just simply going to try and create the whole thing. So I'm going around, 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 doing my best to kind of like copy that center line that I see on that uh, black outline. That was pretty close. That's awesome. Then we'll do the next one, something like this. Cool, and then the last one, something like, whoops, I kind of went a little too inside. Obviously, this is where you go on your PC and you're able to kind of like fix these little dots. But for the sake of this tutorial, I just simply want to do it all on the iPad. Awesome. That looks awesome. Now, right here, you can see that this one right here, because of the push-pull compensation, there's a possibility that it might actually come out of the black outline, and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit more. I love how like easily I can just change these like nodes. It's so awesome. And again, same thing. Properties, grab this one, smooth, smooth it out, schmoody time. 
and select that, perfect. Now for these bases, what I wanna do for the white ones is I do wanna add some sort of like stabilizer, some underlays because by adding underlays, I make sure that the shape isn't gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna get moved around. So to do that, we're gonna go again under properties, we're gonna go down to underlays and I'm simply just gonna add a perpendicular underlay with a density of like three, 2.8, three, that sounds pretty good. Uh, and that's awesome. So what we're gonna do is bring it all the way to the back. That looks great. Let's see what that looks like on 3D. Nice. Now, if you really want to, what you can do, let me disable the 3D, zoom in a little bit. And because we didn't make the whole white one shape, what I can actually do is I can click again the angles and let's change a couple of those angles. Let's let's mess around with this design. Let's create it, create a little like cute, like different angles, nothing too crazy, of course, because I want it to stay like similar. But for example, the ears, I think the ears would look nicer if they were like this and with this one, if it was like that. And now guys, our design, our bunny design is done. One last little tool is if you go to view slow redraw, I'm going to disable the 3D you can actually watch the whole design get drawn. And I can click. Now for now, I don't really suggest the slow redraw with the 3D on, at least on the iPad, because I said it's a little bit slow, so you can see that it's taking its time to process each of the stitches. So if you really need to watch the slow 3D, then make sure that you simply watch it without the 3D on. That way I can scroll through, but you can see that on that outline right there, it's doing one whole solid outline without having to jump, without doing anything crazy. And that's what we want at the end of the day with this design. So cool. Now. All we gotta do is now that this design is ready, I'm going to click save here. I'm going to save. I'm gonna call it Little Bunny. And this design is now saved on your iPad. To transfer this design onto your computer, you're simply gonna go to your files folder and you're gonna go on my iPad. You will find a folder called Design Doodler. You simply click on that. You see the little bunny JDS. JDS is the file format that Design Doodler reads. So I'm gonna cold tap on it and I'm gonna click share. And the last thing you need to do is click on your Gmail, your Google Drive, wherever it is that you wanna share it, transfer it onto your computer and on your computer, you import that design on the Design Doodler, export it as the file that you use guys. So in my case, I'm using DST for my my machine and now we can embroider this design let's go as you can see here I'm pretty much going to open up the little bunny you can see perfect and under 3d it's a lot easier to move around because I no longer have the uh, constraint of the power of the iPad if you need to like I said make those last changes I have the white here everything that we've created together on the iPad but for now I'm just going to show you how I click save on the top left here save as I'm going to click it wherever I want and just change the save type as what I need so for example for me it's going to be DST but for you it might be PES whatever type of uh, machine that it is that you guys are using then you save it import it onto the USB and on your machine now let's see some embroidery And here you go guys, this is what the final look of the design we digitized looks like. Check it out. I'm honestly so happy and actually really impressed with the way that the outlines were done because we did this with an iPad pen on an iPad. So the fact that it still looks really, really clean is pretty amazing. And let's see what it looks like compared to the iPad. Here we got the design doodler. That looks really, really nice. And this is the final outcome of that embroidery. Oh man, it makes me so happy. I hope you guys enjoyed, oh, hello. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to draw. 
digitized and embroidered this design. Please let me know down in the comments your thoughts, your questions, and we'd love to answer them. As well as, let us know what you'd like us to create next. And if you guys want to get the Doodler app, I'm going to link it down in the description for you guys to check it out. I hope you guys have a great time embroidering and digitizing, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.